There's power in the name of Jesus and there's power in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I just wonder, what do we do when we face trials and persecutions and struggles? Do we ask God and beg him to take those things away? Or do we pray that the Holy Spirit would fill us with boldness? That's exactly what they did in this passage. So let's check it out together. Hey, welcome to Bible Time, everybody, the place that we read the Bible together. And it's just an opportunity for us to meet with God every day, hear from him, hear from his heart, hear from his word. There's power in the scriptures. We believe that. I hope that you believe that. Maybe you don't believe that, but you're here checking it out. Either way, I'm glad that you're with me. And uh, and I just know that if we if we allow God's word to speak to us and speak to our hearts, it, it brings life to us. The statistics tell us that you're a healthier person if you spend at least four days a week in God's word. That anxiety is down, depression is down, uh, self-assurance is up, joy is up, all of those things. And so, uh, but above all that, for me, the primary motivation is that myself and all of you, that we would grow in our real relationship with Jesus, like really grow in intimacy in our walk with him, and that we'd learn to hear his voice through his word and through prayer. And so I want to encourage you to spend some time in prayer on your own. And uh, thank you for being with me today. We are in Acts chapter 4, and we're picking up right where... um, you know, this long account of Peter and John healed this guy and it caused this big stir and everybody got involved and they're, everybody's listening and amazed at what's going on. And the leaders were really annoyed because they're teaching in the name of Jesus. They didn't want them to do that. So they arrested them, questioned them. And then this cool thing happened uh, yesterday where it says that they recognized that the disciples were unschooled, ordinary men. Uh, that the Greek word there is idiotes, which, you know, we get idiot from it. And he's, you know, the Bible basically says these guys are just idiots, but they knew that they had been with Jesus. And so this is where we're picking up that they're being released. And so this is what it says, Acts chapter four, starting in verse 23. Let's give our attention to the word of God. When they were released... They went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of your father, da- of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Remember, anointed means uh, Christ or Christ rather means anointed or anointed one. For truly in this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Wow. Wow. While you stretch out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders were performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. filled with the Holy Spirit and continue to speak the word of God with boldness. Wow. I'm just feeling really um, already convicted by something that I just read here. I don't know if it stood out to you, but if you were here yesterday and the day before you saw you know that they had been arrested threatened 
um, you know, these leaders are against him, and they said, do not teach or heal or anything in the name of Jesus. And so the threats came, and this is their prayer. Lord, look upon their threats and grant that your servants, grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That their prayer was not that God would deliver them from the threats. Their prayer was not that, uh, you know, these guys would be distracted or thrown off or, you know, that they, whatever. Their prayer was that in light of the threats, that the Holy Spirit would fill them with even more boldness. I remember, uh, it just brings to mind this time when I took my daughter out on a date and, um, I told her she could buy something from the store and she wanted to buy a necklace and she bought this two pack and it was uh, a rainbow and a rainbow unicorn. And she's like, daddy, you wear one and I'll wear one. And so I got the rainbow unicorn. And so I was wearing it and I wore it for a couple days and we would do this little thing where we would, we would tink them next to each other. And it was just a beautiful thing. Um, but then came the day where I had to go to, to work and it was the interns were going to be there that day. And, and I wasn't wearing it in the morning. She noticed she's like maybe four or five, maybe five. She's like, daddy, where's your necklace? And I was like, well, um, I'm, I have an intern day today and I, I can't wear it cause they'll make fun of me. It's literally what I said. And she said, let's pray. And I was like, <laughs> and I'm not saying like my kid is, you know, the kid that's always like super spiritual and wants to pray. Um, just, but this particular time she did. And this prayer that came out of her mouth was so convicting because she didn't pray that the interns wouldn't make fun of me. She prayed that, um, I would have, you know, be strong and be able to do it or whatever. And I just think it's so, uh, represented uh, like the truth of what God wants for us as believers. Um, she didn't know it, but she was praying that I would have boldness. She wasn't praying that the persecution wouldn't come, like as if interns making fun of my necklace is persecution, but she wasn't praying that the persecution wouldn't come. She was praying that in light of the persecution, I would have strength and courage to still wear the necklace. And the most beautiful thing of all is that that necklace represented our relationship. And so it, to her, it was like obvious, like why wouldn't you wear it? Like you love me, I love you, this this is our thing. Who cares if somebody makes fun of you? Like, obviously you're gonna still do it. And she expected that I was gonna wear it. And it's just so convicting to me because, and I wasn't even thinking about that actually, just reading this brought that to mind. Um, and so that's what God's speaking to me in reading this that I, I guess I haven't really noticed before, but in this passage, they. They, they immediately went to prayer and they weren't concerned with God taking away their persecution. They were asking the Holy Spirit to fill them with boldness that they would continue to walk in spite of the persecution. And I just think that that's awesome. So, and that might be my takeaway today. Let, why don't we finish reading this, this section here? And um, I don't know what your takeaway is, but that's really challenging to me. So let's finish this and then, and then, uh, We'll close for the day. It says, Now the full number of those who believed were in one heart and one soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to them was his own. So it's this continuation of uh, unity. And total generosity and sharing. Total generosity and sharing. Everything was in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. 
For as many as were owners of lands and houses, they sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold them for and laid them at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called the, uh, by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, he sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Barnabas is a great character, son of encouragement that we're going to see interact in the life of uh, Paul moving forward. But man, this is just a beautiful passage of what the church looked like and how they cared for and loved one another, served one another. I want to do one thing real quick. Um, I just want to go back and see the occasions of the name of Jesus. So let me count those real quick. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I didn't know this, but, and, and I might have missed one. I don't know. But in, in this passage, like through through Acts 3 into Acts 4, um, a reference to the name, the word specifically, the word name shows up nine times. And Jesus specifically is referenced nine times. I, I might have miscounted, but... And I don't know if those numbers are significant, but but they but they coincide, and it's it's this combination of the people saying, "By what power, what name did you heal?" And then you know the disciples saying, "It's it's not us, but it's in the name of Jesus that we brought healing, or that this man is walking before you." Excuse me. And then later they're saying, "Don't teach in that name." And they said, "Hey, we can't help but speak about the name of Jesus." And it's it's this constant reference to. The, the power being in his name and his name being important, his name being elevated, and then including his actual name, which is Jesus or Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. And um, there's just something that's so important about the name of Jesus. I don't, I've noticed in our world that people are fine using the term God because it, at least in this generation in our culture, God is is a generic term that can mean kind of any any god out there that one believes in but when you use the name of jesus there's no question as to which god you're talking about and i think that it's really really important it's really important for a number of reasons number one the hebrew version of jesus uh is is really from the root uh yeshua which is you know actually translated joshua but it means that yahweh or jehovah saves and so Jesus, the, the Jesus's name in Greek is Jesus, but it really comes from that root of of Yeshua or Jehovah saves, which is the God of the Old Testament. And so, um, not only that, but the scriptures tell us, like like the last book that we studied, Philippians, that it's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus, the Christ, He is Lord. And uh, I think in uh, first John or one of those, it says, you know, anyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved, um, will be called children of God. And so it's, uh, it's just so important for us to, to lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus says in John 12, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. We talked about that as we read the gospel of John together, that, uh, let's just remember that it's not, it's not in religion. It's not even in the promoting of this thing called Christianity, but that it, what we're what we're representing and where our power comes from, where our life comes from, is in Jesus Himself, the person of Jesus Christ. And so, this passage, uh, I just love this passage because it so emphasizes that. I love this description of the early church and their their uh, their unity and their generosity and their sharing with one another. And man, there's so much in here. I, I wonder what it is that God's speaking to you today. I would encourage you to seek him in prayer and say, Lord, of, of this passage that we've read, what do you want me to do? What what do you, what should, how should I put this into practice today? And uh, for me, again, I guess, I think the ultimate thing that I'm, the, the Holy Spirit speaking to me today is putting his finger in my heart is that they weren't praying that their life would be easier, that the problems would go away. They're praying that the Spirit would fill them with boldness in spite of their problems and their threats of persecution. And so uh, that's a challenge to me, that I wouldn't just always beg God to make my life easier, but 
that I would ask him to fill me with the strength that he wants for me, that I would walk out what he intends for me. And I think that that naturally happens when we grow in our relationship with God, that we grow in our devotion to him, like just like me and my daughter, like when relationship, when real relationship is present, it's like, duh, of course you're going to represent me and not be scared of other people. And so I'm challenged by that. I hope that God's challenging you by that and whatever else that uh, his spirit's speaking to you. And so uh, that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.